Hey guys, what's up? It's DF Knight. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at Star Wars The Black Series Star Wars Rebels Garaza Borelios, aka Zeb. Now, don't get mad at me when I say this, but I have yet to watch Rebels. I know, I know, I really should be watching Rebels. I'm going to be reviewing a few, uh, figure from the show. But I will eventually watch the show. I'm almost done with Clone Wars. I'm doing all the Star Wars stuff chronologically. So rest assured, I will be getting to Rebels soon. Um, I have the previous Rebels Black Series figures that I still didn't watch the show when I got those. I got those just in case I did like the show when I eventually started watching. Uh, if I don't like the show, then I can always just, you know, sell these figures off. But if I do like the show, then I'll keep them in my collection. And this is the figure that all of the Rebels collectors have really been needing for their Black Series Rebels display. And it came out this year. And then they re-released the rest of the crew with different uh, paint apps and face printing technologies for some of the characters. The ones I definitely needed were Ezra, Chopper, and Zeb. So let's go ahead and take a look at Zeb's packaging here. We have Star Wars The Black Series at the top here. You can see Zeb in the box as well as the other contents of the box right there. When we look towards the bottom, it says Star Wars Rebels as well as the warnings, age restrictions. Um, we also have the Hasbro logo. It says Gara Zeb, Zeb Aurelios. When we look to the other side, there really isn't much going on here. It just says Star Wars The Black Series towards the bottom there. And then when we look on this side, this is a really cool side because it has this really nice slanted packaging with the artwork. And you can see this really cool image of Zeb right there. And then when we look towards the bottom of this side, it says Gara Zeb, Zeb Aurelios. When we look at the back, we have that same image of Zeb. This time it's much bigger than we have a read-up of Zeb right there. When we look towards the bottom, we have some more warnings and stuff. There really isn't much on the top of the box, but when we look towards the bottom, you can see where the barcode is in case you need the barcode. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging. So here is Zeb out of the packaging. It's a pretty fun figure, and you Rebels collectors are going to really need this figure. Um, it does have some issues, though, that I will talk about in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at his accessory, then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So this is his bow rifle, which is really cool. They did a lot of cool stuff with this. First of all, the handles have a little bit of sculpting going on here, but it's just a little plain, I think. If they go down, though. I wish they would go out a little bit farther. Um, the trigger here, this is for when it's in the rifle position, and um, it's pretty good. I dig the tape. It's a little sloppy with the green tape in the gray of the plastic, but it's not the worst. Uh, there's some silver dry brushing throughout the, uh, well, not really dry brushing, just splotches of silver throughout the weapon here. You can extend that. You can twist this around and all that. It's pretty cool. There's some more silver there, some silver on the blaster end right there. So it's just a really nice looking piece. They have these uh, pieces right here for the staff to extend. And then this side right here as well can extend outward. So I'm trying to focus up here. This is how how long it can be. It's pretty well done, I think. This is uh, pull out just a little bit, and then these can go in a little bit more because they'll get in the way of each other. But I dig it. It's pretty cool. He has these effects pieces. I had to look at them for a second. They just plug into the ends of the staff like so. He comes packaged with these, and uh, it's kind of like you know these electro um, type of. Uh, just these type of effects pieces that fit on here, which is pretty cool. And when we take a look, they are, I think they're pretty nicely sculpted. Um, they also are just mostly mo uh, translucent, pinkish, almost purple uh, plastic. But a little bit of a splotch there, but overall these are pretty cool. He also has weapon storage. Simply collapse this weapon like so and then plug in the peg holes into the back and it will fit in there just fine you can do this for the other side too because there's also these peg holes so this is a pretty good looking figure especially with the head sculpt here i really like it a lot now i'm going to move over and i'm going to try to find some images of zeb from the show because i don't think it's the most accurate sculpt i feel like mostly the eyes are the issue and the eyes need to be bigger um the thing i think that hasbro was um Considering though is that since most of the Black Series line is live action characters that they wanted these uh, Rebels figures to sort of fit in with that as well. So it's a little bit more realistic looking. I don't think it looks bad at all. I, it's just not accurate for some people who wanted a more accurate piece. Um, the head sculpt is just a 
awesome like I said I like the facial hair just the different variations of paint in the black there I dig that a lot they have some different uh, tones of purple uh, the ears could be sculpted if the sculpting on there looks a little dirty it's not the greatest sculpt it's not horrible though that's just me nitpicking at this point the eyes themselves are are nicely printed so that's good at least I like in the creases just almost like this purple paint going on like a dark purple I really dig that a lot. I like the printing of the dark purple around his head. It looks towards the back. You can see that right there. I dig that a lot. It looks great. From what I understand, the skin tones are pretty consistent on this guy. We'll keep looking though. We we'll move towards the chest. You can see some scratches and dents and stuff around there. I wish it was a little bit more prominent because in the light you can definitely see it, but in person without any special lighting, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I think it might be molded in this. I could be wrong. It's molded in one of these greens, but we have different variations of green, and it's pretty good. I uh, I like what they're doing with. I don't really know what this is supposed to be. A lot of these details I'm missing right now. When eventually when I watch the show, I'm probably going to come back to this review and kick myself and realize just how dumb I am because some of these um, details that I'm missing and the names of these stuff is easy to remember. Um, and if you hear construction outside, I do apologize. I it, They did a really good job making this piece look symmetrical though on the shoulder pad. And there is some sculpting here where the light green meets the dark green. And there's some more sculpting actually in some lines and creases throughout this chest piece too. You can see where those two hole systems peg in right there for that weapon. I also think this shoulder pad as well, it's, it's pretty much the same, but there's just no additional you know, white paint right there. Looks almost like a fish. Different variations of green going on though. We move towards the bottom. You can see, I want, to me, it looks like there's different variations of yellow. The chest doesn't match up with the crotch piece or the hips. And then the, up, the upper thigh right here also doesn't match there. And I don't even think this matches with this. Maybe almost it does, but it just, the yellow, it's more noticeable, uh, noticeable in the camera than it is in person, granted. But, um, yeah, I don't think it looks the greatest, but it's not a deal breaker. So I almost skipped the arms completely, and they're really well done with these nice wrinkles and creases and detailing in the skin. And then you have the paint going on throughout here. The paint apps that they applied. Um, we also have some paint on the joints. And it's not... They sort of have some paint going on here for the... In, you know, inward of his arm, but it's not the cleanest. The gap right there could be a little distracting for the elbow, but I don't think so. Uh, it just looks really good. The different variations of purple in his skin are really nice. We have this little forearm guard right here, which we have another forearm guard right there. There's a little bit of yellow and silver. Very similar details of uh, the arm right here for both sides, pretty much. Now you can see that paint in the joint isn't the most consistent, but the nails are pretty good. Got some green around the hands. Uh, different purples on the uh, inside of the joint. This one goes in and out. Yeah, I'm not going to really worry much about the different colors of purple here. The nails, again, look really good. I also dig this belt that I wasn't mentioning earlier. But the uh, nice silver and yellow going on there. And then we have a dark green, a little bit of splotching right there. So. There's some light green around here too. So that could be fixed a little bit with some of the splotching, but it's not that much on the figure. Uh, it looks like some yellow is bleeding through right here where it is supposed to be green. The upper thighs do look pretty good. They sculpted these seam lines and some wrinkles in there. I like the knee pads, but there is a scuff right there. I'm pretty sure the right, uh, I don't think I did that. I think that fit in there. There's also some green on the joint, which isn't gonna be the most noticeable. But I might try to remove that with uh, acetone, which is pretty risky. But uh, if I can't do it properly, then I won't do it. With the parts around the shins. Then we go down to the feet. As you can see, these are really well sculpted. And um, you can see the different variations. So they actually sculpted the inside of the joints too. On the back of the legs. The paint's not the most consistent with these joints. But uh, it's not that bad. If we look towards the feet, they look really good, I think. The sculpting on the toes especially are really good. I like the wrinkles. It's just lots of nice details going on. That's what the bottom of the feet look like. There's not much going on there. 
So it's a pretty well detailed piece. I really think it looks good. You can see a three. I really need to buy one of these uh, motorized rotating stands for the figure, so you can get a good three sixty look. And I'm not just holding the figure. But uh, for articulation, it's pretty good. Some of it, to me, could be a little bit hindered. But I think they sculpted it well enough to where it's not going to be too bad with hindering. Let's actually zoom out just a little. So first of all, the head is on a ball peg system, so it goes forward a little bit right there. That's how. The down is not going to be the greatest, but the up is going to be pretty all right. Side to side, all the way around. Arms can go in and out, they go in and out, and the shoulder pads don't really get in the way. But the arm is a little loose at the elbow, so that's a little worrisome. It's not as much here as it is here. We have a uh, single jointed elbow that actually bends really well. And then we have a swivel at the elbow. This has an up and down joint here, as well as a swivel. Well, this swivels and has an in and out joint. We do have a waist twist that's on a ball joint system. So it's a, I think it's on a similar ball peg system as the head. It goes forward, back, side to side, all the way around. I don't think we've ever had a traditional crunch with the Black Series line. I could be wrong. We have legs that can go forward. The back is not the greatest at all. In and out, pretty good. This is a really tight upper thigh joint for this leg, but this one's not too bad. We do also get the double jointed knees, as you can see. We have a bend here at the foot. That bends really well. Then we also have another bend at this part of the foot. So this will swivel here, and then it will also attempt to do an ankle rocker right here. So pretty good amount of articulation, especially the feet. The, the upper torso could, you know, use some better, especially in the arms and the actual torso itself. But I mean, towards the bottom, you get some pretty good articulation. So Zeb is pretty tall, and I have some of the previous Rebel figures to show for size comparisons. On the left, we have Kanan Jarrus. On the right, we have Hera. And then on the left, we have Sabine, as you can see here. And on the right, we have the Ahsoka figure. And then we have some different figures in the Black Series line. We have the Shore Trooper, the Scarif Storm Trooper, the retail version. On the left, on the right, we have Chewbacca. So he's not as tall as Chewbacca, but he's pretty close. And then on the left, we have the new Imperial Storm Trooper. And on the right, we have the Mandalorian. So to end this review, I'm going to show you what he looks like with his weapon as well as other Black Series figures. As you can see here, he actually holds the weapon with the rival position a lot better than I thought he was going to. The handle wants to set up in its hand just a little too high, but you can still get him into some uh, pretty natural looking uh, rifle poses. Now when it comes to the staff, as you can see here, I have it to where the hands are meeting towards the middle because there's not as much plastic getting in the way of the hands, but it doesn't look the most natural. I don't think that's how you're supposed to have it. When I do it the different way though, where the hands are on the sides of the plastic of the rifle where the tape is, which I'm pretty sure is how they do it in the show, uh, the plastic is just too big on the weapon and it just doesn't fit in the hand very well. It doesn't really help that his arms are a little bit hindered and the head articulation is also hindered. So you really are limited with your range of motion when it comes to dynamic poses. But other than that, the rest of the articulation is pretty good. I really like a lot of the paint apps going on here, and it's just detailed very well. And overall, it is a really good figure. Is it worth the $30 that they're charging? I don't know. I think that's a little steep. It is a pretty big figure, and the weapon is pretty cool. But honestly, $25, bucks, definitely. $30, maybe just a little too much. But if you need this for your Rebels display, you're going to want to pick it up. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share amongst your friends, and I will see you guys later.